In the previous video lecture, we studied central D cell tolerance. There we saw how auto reactive T cells are eliminated from the central lymphoid organs in their early developmental stages. We also said that central tolerance is not foolproof. So, self reactive T cells that escape central tolerance now enter the peripheral lymphoid organs. It is now the job of peripheral tolerance to ensure that these auto reactive T cells do not attack self tissues. The main mechanisms of peripheral tolerance involve peripheral clonal deletion, energy, immune deviation, immune privilege, immunosuppressive molecules and regulatory T cells. Among these mechanisms, the first two prevent autoreactive T cells from getting activated. If somehow, the autoreactive T cells get activated, the remaining mechanisms are responsible for controlling the immune response. To understand the mechanisms of peripheral tolerance, we must know the concept of the maturation of dendritic cells and T cell activation. Let's recall these concepts in brief. When there is an infection or injury in our body, danger signals are generated. So, what are these danger signals? Danger signals are the various molecules produced during an infection or injury. For example, products of invading microbes cytokines and chemokines produced by innate cells during inflammatory response, complement proteins etc. These danger signals are further recognized by pattern recognition receptors of innate system cells and, these cells release more cytokines. We know that, immature dendritic cells are broadly distributed in the peripheral tissues of our body. The cytokines released by innate cells induce the maturation of these immature dendritic cells. Dendritic cells now start expressing co-stimulatory molecules on their surface. Besides this, dendritic cells have their own pattern recognition receptors. These receptors of dendritic cells can bind to the danger signals directly and can result in activation of dendritic cells. Once activated, these dendritic cells collect the antigen from the site of infection, process them, and display them as peptide antigen MHC complex on their surface. Next, they migrate to nearest secondary lymphoid tissue such as lymph node and present these antigens to naive T cells. For the complete activation of the naive T cell, three signals are required. First signal is generated when T cell receptor of the naive T cell recognizes and binds to the antigen presented by dendritic cell. The coreceptor of naive T cell recognize and bind the MHC molecule. Second signal known as costimulation results when costimulatory molecule B7 present on the dendritic cell is recognized and bound by costimulatory receptor CD28 of the T cell. Finally, cytokines are released by the T cell, which by autocrine signaling result in the activation of the T cell. Activation is followed by proliferation and differentiation of T cells into affected T cells. As a result, an immune response against the antigen is generated. All these events takes place when there is an infection or injury in the body. But, we are talking about autoreactive T cells, means T cells that recognize self antigens. Now, question here is what is the source of self antigens in our body? Our body's healthy tissues and organs constantly shed low levels of component proteins. The cells also undergo apoptosis during normal turnover process. So, these are the sources of self antigens. Now, note that there is no infection or injury. This means when we are talking about self antigens, danger signals are absent. 
these self-antigens or apoptotic cells are taken up by immature dendritic cells. Dendritic cells process them and display them as MHC peptide complexes on their surface. In the absence of danger signals, the dendritic cells do not express co-stimulatory molecules. Or they express very low levels of MHC and co-stimulatory molecules. Dendritic cells now present these self-antigens to naive T cells in the lymph nodes. If an autoreactive T cell, whose T cell receptor is specific for the self-antigen displayed by dendritic cell, the interaction between them will occur. That means, the autoreactive T cell will get first signal for its activation. But, second signal, co-stimulation, is absent. This is because the dendritic cell does not express co-stimulatory molecules. In the absence of signal 2, the T cell undergo apoptosis. Thus, no immune response is observed and T cell tolerization is induced. This mechanism of peripheral tolerance in which, autoreactive T lymphocytes are eliminated by programmed cell death or apoptosis, is known as, peripheral clonal deletion of T cells. Now, not all T cells that recognize self-peptide MHC molecules on immature dendritic cells undergo clonal deletion. Some of them survive, but they become inactivated so that they cannot differentiate into effector cells. This process in which, a lymphocyte remains inactive, even on coming in contact with its specific antigen, is known as, anergy. Reasons for anergy of T cells is the absence of signals for the complete T cell activation. So, clonal deletion and, anergy are the two main mechanisms of peripheral tolerance that, prevent the activation of autoreactive lymphocytes. But what if, autoreactive T lymphocytes somehow get activated? Peripheral tolerance has several other control mechanisms for this. These mechanisms control the quality, intensity and, duration of resulting immune response. Immune deviation refers to the phenomenon in which, a potentially harmful immune response is converted to, a less harmful response. Immune privilege refers to the fact that, there are certain anatomical regions in our body which are naturally less subject to immune responses. These sites include central nervous system and brain, the eyes and, the testes. Certain cytokines such as interleukin-10 and transforming growth factor beta have immunosuppressive effects. For example, these cytokines inhibit macrophage activation, inflammatory cytokine secretion, downregulates intracellular signaling in a responding T cell, blocks antigen presenting cells function etc. Regulatory T cells have ability to control the responses of activated T cells, regardless of the antigenic specificity. They block the proliferation of T cells. Also, they secrete immunosuppressive cytokines. So, we now understand that peripheral tolerance is responsible for tolerance in peripheral circulation. In the next video lecture, we will study B cell tolerance. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you for watching.